Having successfully dunked our classic Range Rover chassis in Evaporust in the last episode, John got a bit overexcited with progress and then asked if he could borrow my trailer. Ed, can I borrow your trailer? To pick up the cheapest Ferrari in Europe. Now, obviously, we're all intrigued and can't wait to see quite how bad the car is. But before we drag the trailer across the country to pick up yet another project, I need to get my L322 Range Rover through an MOT. So today I've teamed up with my old friends at eBay so we can see how their Assured Fit products work on their My Garage section of eBay. I'm also going to tackle a typical Range Rover problem that can be hard to diagnose if you don't know what you're looking for. Thanks to the appalling state of John's rusty old Range Rover, I'm already on pretty thin ice with the MOT station. Some would say that the tester is not always pleased to see me. I've just had a quick chat with Jason, the MOT tester. I think it went as well as could be expected. So this time I should make an effort and at least fix any obvious faults. And the most obvious issue with the car is it's missing a headlight and that will definitely fail an MOT. All right, so I've gone on to eBay and to get to the assured fit parts, I'm going to go to my garage. I'm just going to pop in my reg number. And in fact, I've been on here quite recently. So obviously the number comes up, it's nice and easy. And then I get a whole load of parts come up as an option, which is lovely. And then I'm just going to type in headlight. So obviously that's the first thing that I need. And then straight away, there's a list of all these suitable parts for the car. And you can see a little green circle on them with a little white tick. And of course, that shows you that that part is actually an eBay Assured Fit part. So it's guaranteed to fit your car. And if it doesn't, you actually have 30 days in which you can actually send it back free of charge, which is kind of handy. Now, obviously, we've already looked at the car. We know that we're going to go with the Bizenon, but obviously you could just look up in your manual as well. My particular Range Rover, it could actually come with either either the sort of halogen headlights, which would be an H7 bulb, or it could be the Bi-Xenon type, which would be D3S. So that's what I'm gonna look for here in the filters on the left-hand side, so go for that. And then I've obviously got to choose who make the bulb. I think I'm gonna go with Philips, because I love their quartz glass. It lasts lots longer when you get splashing through water and stuff, so that's good. So there we go, and then you can see I've got a couple of options here. Now they both say that they fit the car, but if I actually, what I can even do, I can just buy both of those. So put that one there, put that into the cart, put that one there, put that into the cart. Now, if I check the cart, you can now see that actually the, the sort of the second one, if you like, the, the, the greener ones, they actually aren't suitable for the vehicle, but the other ones at the top are. So I'm going to go for those. Obviously, you need a pair of those. So put that into the list. Now, while we're looking for new parts, my Range Rover does have a very weird problem that it keeps coming to. And basically, if it's damp enough or cold enough for whatever particular weird reason, it's like a kind of narrow temperature humidity band, it just won't start. So it's quite late at night. I'm trying to go home. I push start on the Range Rover and it just sits there and then times out. And because it's got a push button, you can't just crank it over anyway and just persuade it to start kind of more manually. So it's a little damp, it's about nine degrees. Put my foot on the brake push the button you'd hope it would start obviously it's maybe warming up the glow plugs nothing really going on at all and that little click that is basically the contactors timing out because we're not going to go anywhere because the car has decided we're not going to go anywhere nightmare so to get me out of trouble i just basically pop the bonnet connect a battery charger for about 30 seconds maybe two minutes and then weirdly having locked it and unlocked it again started again often it all starts, which is great, but really very annoying. And obviously, if you haven't got a battery charger and some power, then of course you need like a jump pack or something. So it's just a bit of a faff. Now, the weird thing is I've got a friend who works at JLR called Adam. You may have seen him on the show before when we've been taking apart John's rusty Range Rover. And basically, he seems to think that it's quite a common problem. And it comes down to some weird design with the starter motor. So basically, you've got these sort of little drain plugs. And the idea being that, of course, you can go through a big puddle or a lake or whatever it is that Range Rovers do. And of course, it's going to stop those electronics from getting wet. But unfortunately, because of the change in temperature constantly, you end up getting water or moisture kind of condensing inside those tubes. And that runs down into the contactors and then actually starts to corrode the very thing you need to work, which is really rather annoying and a really stupid, stupid design. So what we need to do now is actually take the starter mode off and then change it for a brand new one and that way we'll get some nice brand new contactors and that way hopefully it'll start every time even if it's really damp. So now just type in starter motor and we've got a whole load that come up. Now I'm going to go for one here from Wasp 
There we go. So I'm just going to add that to the list. That's cool. Now, because of this problem, one of the weird errors that comes up on the dashboard is that the battery is basically flat or low on charge and it wants me to start the engine. Obviously, I'm trying to. It's not really going to let me do that. But because it's a little tired, I'm thinking even though I also charge it up regularly, I might be just better off just changing for a new battery just to be sure. So let's have a little look at that. So I'm just going to type in battery on there. <laughs> OK, there's loads and loads to choose from. Now that's interesting. We'll come back to that in a second. Now, what I'm actually looking for, just to try and narrow this down, go back to the filters again here. So obviously I want the battery to fit. We know that it's going to be in a short fit, so that's fine. Because I drive to Norway a lot, it's very, very cold over there. I need to go for kind of the most winterproof battery there is, which was an AGM or absorbed glass matte battery. And so I'm going to go for that. It's way better in cold temperatures. And I've got a big old 4.4 litre V8 in my Range Rover, so I want something with a lot of cranking power. So let's just go for, I don't know, 950 amps for, for the uh, cranking there, the CCA or cold cranking amps. And then there's an XI battery with a 95 amp hour capacity. So that's how long I can be cranking over all those amps. So that's good. An hour of starting should be just enough. So that's cool. So we'll put that into the list as well. Now let's go back to that little key fob that popped up with the battery because my key fob is in a terrible, terrible state. So it'd be really good to just kind of give that a bit of refreshing as well. I didn't know you could even get these. So that's great. So just add that onto the list as well. Right then. So while all that stuff wends its way to us, what I now need to do is actually start taking out that starter motor. Um, well, to get this starter motor out, all I have to do is undo the two electrical connectors, obviously the main one going to the battery and the other one obviously that goes to the starter solenoid effectively. And then I've got the two bolts that hold it onto the bell housing, which I've pretty much nearly undone. And then I've got those two pesky tubes that are funneling the water into the starter motor. But once all that's done, I don't actually know how I'm going to get it off the car because really the only gap it could possibly go through is maybe there. I don't think it's going to go there. Definitely is going to go there or there because of the uh, anti roll bar. I have no idea. It's a very, very dumb design. Oh, look at that. What amazing timing, just as I get the old starter motor out, all the new stuff from eBay has turned up. And actually, it turns out this design wasn't quite as dumb as I first thought because there's a gap in the subframe that's just the right size to wiggle this out from. So that's fantastic. So now all I have to do is put the new one back on and hopefully it'll start starting when it's damp. Now this is an OEM spec starter motor. So it's basically exactly the same, but with nice shiny new components and no corroded contactors. So just thread this in. The reverse of how I did it before. I absolutely don't have to take it apart this much just to get to the contactors which are in here. But it's very interesting to see what's going on inside. And obviously this little planetary gear set here 
is obviously what makes this thing so torquey and start the engine nice and quickly. So all we have to do is get that little nut off and then I can see what's going on inside. So now looking at the result, you can see that actually our contactors, you can see there's lots of points where they've been arcing and a lot of soot around there, but not as much corrosion as I was expecting. But also, if you actually look, at, you've got the drain or the little air vent there, and you've also got the air vent at this end as well. And you can see that that isn't really going anywhere into those brushes and the brushes obviously go onto this motor here and of course that's going to be cleaning all the time so I'm pretty sure there's no bad connection down there and I'm pretty sure that even though this connection looks like it's seen some work it's obviously been on the car a long long time so I don't think that was a problem either. Now I have had to clean a couple of other terminals when I was actually putting the starter motor back together again and so it could literally have been just down to that or it could be a whole other problem completely. So I guess the moral of this story could be that if your Range Rover is also reluctant to start when it's damp, before you go to the trouble and expense of fitting a brand new starter motor, do check for a dirty ring and make sure that it is spotlessly clean to eliminate any chance at all of a dodgy electrical connection. That problem could be that simple to solve. But either way, with a brand new starter motor, there's every chance that the car should start. Let's hope, fingers crossed. It just makes sense to do both sides, just to make sure that the colour is the same, nice and even. And also, if one bulb is blown, chances are the other one might do too. Any minute now. And thank goodness I can change the bulbs without removing the front of the car. It's actually a good design, even if it's tight. Well, it's going very well. I've done all the jobs on the Range Rover except for the key fob. Now, this key fob obviously works on a Range Rover. Also, I think maybe a Discovery 4, depending on what model you've got. And I'm just going to just cut off all of this tape, first of all. <laughs> just hold it together. I think basically because I keep touching weird chemicals and then touching the key fob is actually kind of done funny things to the rubber and made it all expand. Now, basically, you not really see it too clearly, but you can see there's this sort of knurled part on either end. So that's the first thing to do. When you want to change the battery, it's got a CR2032 in here. So yeah, so then I didn't get hold of those and then just tease that out. And in fact, this <laughs> the key is completely fallen apart. Obviously, that bit is supposed to be attached. And then you can see in here that there's actually the key to get into the car. So I'll need that for later on. Now, as it happens, I can kind of peel all this away. But normally, to take this key apart, you've got a little bit on the end here. You can put that down with your nail and you can peel that apart. Or, of course, you can just get a screwdriver and do that. But then that peels that underway like so. And then that reveals a little bit for the battery. So again, I can then peel that out like so. And then there's your little button cell. Here we go, CR2032. So the bit I actually want to keep hold of is this circuit board here. So I can now get rid of that. And then I just need to take that out there like so. And we'll use that in a second. Again, pull out that little chap for later. So then I can now put my circuit board back in position. As you can see that sits in there like so. It's a nice simple thing and then I can then start to try and reassemble it. So now just looking at this I've noticed actually that my original one has Range Rover written on it but the new one doesn't. So I'm actually going to swap over the metal bits, there's no reason why I can't. 
And theoretically, these are all the same bits made from the same moulds or something similar. <laughs> so let's just hope I can now just get that into position. So that's that one. So that's where the key goes. So we can do that in a second. And of course, then again, we'll get my Range Rover bit as well. So pop that in there like so. Right. So we've already got the battery in place, so that's fine. So that all goes together. So then all we have to do is then put on, make sure it's around the right way, that top like so, and then finally pop in our key, of course, vital important, just, there we are, just pop it into there, it just slots in, and then, oops, <laughs> and I'll put it down there. Well, look at that, our refurbished key fob looks fantastic, particularly as I've retained the Range Rover engraving on the side. So now let's see if everything works. So, first of all, haha, <laughs> The key fob is working nicely. Let's see if the headlights work. Look at that, fantastic. So now we need to do is find out if the starter motor works, then we're ready for our MOT. With eBay Assured Fit, enter your reg to find the right MOT part at the right price. And if it doesn't fit, return it for free within 30 days. Right, well, it is a bit damp in the air. It's a little bit chilly, but let's hope our fix on the starter motor has done the trick. Just thinking about it. Fantastic. Suspension fault? Well, that's definitely a job for another day. 